Hey there! You know, we've done a bunch of these videos and so far nothing particularly embarrassing has happened. Are you ready to change that? I know I am. Everybody, welcome to Sean. Activate. My name is Sean and I'm here to say, New Media Rights is here to stay. We're a nonprofit you can't resist if you're a filmmaker, musician, or artist. We deal with legal issues all the time about putting your art or business online. Word. Oh God, that was terrible. Terribly great. I should copyright that rap before someone else does, right? But can I copyright that rap? That's what we're here to talk about. What are three basic legal requirements for copyright? Those three requirements are number one, fixation, number two, expression, and number three, originality. <laughs> Number one, fixation. For your work to be copyrighted, it has to be fixed in a tangible medium. This means that people have to be able to see it in some permanent form. I know you're trying to block it out of your memory, but let's go back to that kick and rap Sean did. If Sean snuck into your bedroom and woke you up in the middle of the night, dropped that knowledge on you, and then left, he wouldn't be able to copyright it. That's because there's no way to reproduce it. It's not fixed into an audio recording or video. He didn't even write it down. But if he recorded it somehow, it's copyrighted because it can be reproduced. This is why he decided to spit those lyrical darts on video, so he could fix them in a tangible medium right away. It's a good thing I'm friends with Sean because he's going to be rich. Okay, moving along. Number two, expression. So let's pretend we're still friends, even after our rap video goes viral, and I become the new internet superstar. Now, pretend I ask you for a movie recommendation but not just any movie. I want to see a movie about a suave government spy who uses gadgets and is irresistible to women. Said another way, I'd like to see a movie that is based on that idea. Now, you could probably recommend all sorts of movies to me based on that idea. You have five seconds. Go. Okay, so I heard three. Goldeneye? Austin Powers, and Mission Impossible. Those three different movies are expressions of that idea that I wanted to see. The idea of a suave government spy who uses gadgets is not something you can copyright. If you remember, copyrights exist for the benefit of the public. Therefore, nobody's going to benefit from someone just having an idea to do something. Once you express that idea by writing it in a book or movie or other piece of art, then it can be copyrighted. It's actually really important that ideas aren't protectable. Imagine if the first James Bond novel came out and the idea of that gadget-using spy became copyrighted. That means nobody could ever write about a spy who uses gadgets again. At all. Even if otherwise, the character is nothing like James Bond. Well, that's no good. Basically, the law wants everyone who feels like it to be able to write about cool spies. Since the law only protects expression, this can lead to some interesting results. Say you're a poet living on the East Coast. You've been writing a poem at a coffee shop during your lunch breaks for the past two years, and you just finished it today. Congratulations. Now imagine that some dude in a bar on the West Coast just wrote a few quick words on a napkin, and it ended up being the exact same poem, word for word. First of all, that's an amazing coincidence. Second of all, both of your poems get full copyright protection because both of you came up with it independently of one another. Isn't that wild? Moving on. Number three, originality. Anyway, copyright law requires a work to be original, but that originality is actually a pretty low threshold. You've heard people say that every idea has been done before. Someone has even written a whole book about how all stories fit into one of 36 different categories, and that every story you've ever read or heard or seen is just a variation on one of those 36 stories. Google it. It's interesting. Anyway, this means there's no way to tell what's original or what's not. So let's use a real-world example, the Feist case, where a court helped describe the meaning of originality. That case is about phone books. Remember those? The court decided that a list of names and addresses listed alphabetically inside the phone book isn't original. But contrast this with the photograph on the front cover, which would almost certainly meet the originality requirements. It gets more complicated when you start adding some French legal terms into it, like Sens a faire. Sens a faire are those elements of stories that have to be in there for the story to make sense. 
Think about westerns and science fiction stories. Westerns almost always have horses, saloons, cowboys. Sci-fi stories always have spaceships, aliens, and probably lasers. Those kinds of story elements can't be copyrighted because they're so common to the genre. All those common elements are sans affaire. Say it with me. Sen a fair. Moving on. It's good to know that when it comes to copyrights, quality does not matter either. That bad rap Sean did at the beginning of the video? It's as copyrightable as a verse on the newest Jay-Z album. Though we can all agree his is better, right? Right? Fine, I see how it is. I won't hold it against you. Now that we've talked about what can be copyrighted, check the next video, What Can't Be Copyrighted, for information about that. And why don't you give us a donation? Your support means that we can keep making these videos, so go to our YouTube channel or newmediarights.org to donate. If you do, I promise Sean won't rap again. <laughs> I forget to say that. <laughs>